Hey, Ding Dongs. I'm Jamie. I'm Richard. And this is Explain It to Jamie, the political comedy podcast in which I, Jamie, a politically innocent but curious young man, have the complicated political happenings of the world explained to me by my smart friend, Richard Lamb. Yay. I, I almost said fart smend, <laughs> but I didn't, and that's <laughs> what's smend. important. It uh, was actually like a 19th century monastic order that believed that <laughs> farts mend. <laughs> and attempted to cure people of leprosy and... You yeah, know, um, it was on Shakespeare's G list of hot poetry. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, have you seen the ads for this fucking new TV show coming out called Will, which is like before he was Shakespeare, he was Will. Oh, it's all over yeah. New York. It's like everywhere. It looks just like hot garbage. Yeah, yeah. It's just like sexy Shakespeare, isn't it? Yeah. And then there's this like appalling scene that they've put out as a promo where it's like Eight Mile, where they're doing like. Elizabethan sonnets at each other, like diss sonnets, like Shakespeare and this guy in a bar. And he's like, Forsooth, sir, for all the people do know indeed that Sir Charles of Berkville doth smell strongly of weed. And everyone's like, oh, <laughs> oh so burn. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, well, in a way that I'm kind of like horrified, um, but also maybe this will mean that everyone won't need so much Shakespeare anymore. Yeah. Because right now, yeah. everybody needs a lot of Shakespeare to get through their day. Yeah, everyone's like, we're hungry for Shakespeare. Yeah. No, I can't go anywhere without the hottest new Shakespeare movie shouting in my face. Exactly. If I go a full year without seeing at least two unique productions of King Lear, I it's a, it's a wasted year. <laughs> I have great news for you about Toronto's <laughs> theater series. We got three of them, baby! Three layers, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, guys, welcome back to the podcast. If you're if you're a, a recurring visitor, and welcome for the first time. If you've never been here before, um, we're still um, we're still recording remotely right now. I'm still in New York City, and Jamie's still in, Toronto, and I yeah, will baby. be until until August. Um, but you know, technology. It's like we're we're hanging out together. It's like you know, it's like we're in the same room. Yeah, those of you that are, are are consummate members of our of our team will will know that this this show usually involves Richard explaining a a heavy, complicated, politically based topic uh, to myself. Um, but uh, not this episode. Yeah, we're doing um, a little switcheroo. It's a new episode, so if you are, if this is your first time listening to Explain It to Jamie, you may be a bit confused as to why a dumb man is explaining a complicated <laughs> topic to a much smarter man. Um, yeah, wow. it just so happened that when we kind of perused through our episode list and arrived at this topic, this turned out to be a topic that Jamie was like really interested in on his own and had already learned a lot of stuff about. So we said, hey, I already know a bunch of stuff about this, but we want to cover this topic. Why don't I explain it to me? Yeah, and so was this is all this those is, pronouns were fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> Effectively, it's an old switcheroo. Jamie's explaining to Richard, so it's like it's more like explain it exclamation part two comma Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with two with two <laughs> O's in yeah, two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I dig that. Um, what do you say we uh, we launch into this fucking uh, into this fucking theme song? I say we play this the shit out of this theme song. Yeah, I'll play that track. <laughs> Two days ago, when uh, my, my window was open, there's this homeless guy that sits across the street, um, and he was singing at the top of his lungs um, in, like, a, you know, not great tempo. Um, he's like, it's how I woke up in the morning. <laughs> but this guy going, play the funky music, white boy. Play the funky music, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. thought you were going to say he was singing the theme song to our podcast. Oh, can you imagine? No. I think that's when I, I we, can't we'll know imagine. we've really arrived. When yeah, homeless yeah. people are aware of us. Yeah, and then when we're like, hey, where'd you hear that? And he's like, heard what? Oh, I'm heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Funny, because they're not on the internet. Um, okay. Did you even say Edward... what this topic was? Oh, Edward song? Snowden. 
it's Edward, Edward Snowden, Snowden, everybody. I mean, you, presumably you've read the title of this episode. Yeah, um, and yeah, there's so like a flashy Edward photo Snowden thing. today. Edward Snowden. We're covering Snowden today. I know who he is, and I know a little bit about what he did, but I didn't research this, so I'm a little fuzzy on the, the who's, what's, where's, why's, when's and when's and of it all. And where's. Yes, um, and, and Jamie is informed. So, so I really want to know about this because Snowden is a you know really prominent figure. Now. Um, you hear him brought up a lot. He's kind of a common talking point, especially among Republicans and kind of people who want to like tear him down because he's kind of an advocate for freedom of information and freedom of expression and lack of censorship. And he lives in Russia. So people are always like, ah, he lives in Russia. He's an agent of Russia. Um, and those are the hard facts that I know. Um, Jamie, why don't you take over from here, man? Exactamundo, man. Um, I'm just uh, wary of my sound right now because literally 200 motorcycles are driving by. And I <laughs> think that Thunder Road is real and oh is, act- is actually Dufferin Street here in Toronto. That's so badass. <laughs> um, I can't uh, hear it personally in my headphones. Okay, okay. Um, so, Edward Snowden, Richard, is a um, computer genius, to be honest. Um, not not just from my point of view, but from the point of view of almost all of his peers his entire life. Um, right. he, is, he is an exceptional computer mind with a specific interest in computer security. He's from uh, North Carolina originally and uh, uh, later in life moved to Maryland. His He comes from a military family. His grandfather uh, was in the Coast Guard and was a high up uh, military officer. I don't know his exact station, but he was stationed at the Pentagon on September 11th. Mm-hmm. Uh, both his parents are military. His sister is uh, a federal lawyer. His whole family it works for the federal government. Um, yeah, yeah, which will come into play a bit more later when people are like accusing him of being a Russian uh, like sleeper cell <laughs> thing. Yeah, right. um, so that's important to remember that his family is uh, is quite. The alibi. Yeah. Um, anyway, Edward Snowden, um, he moved when he was in high school, and instead of going back to high school, he just completed his GED online, or he just took the test for his GED, rather. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, another window into how smart he is. Mm-hmm. Um, after finishing high school, he did some online um, university uh, stuff. He, he did some stuff with the University of... Uh, Liverpool online, and then he went to ultimately went to uh, into the military. Uh, I right. think before graduating, finishing his master's degree. Mm-hmm. Um, he, the reason he wanted to go into the special forces, um, and the reason he didn't was he broke his legs in a training accident. Um, Both of them. Both of his legs. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. So he broke both his legs in a training accident, and they said, uh, you're not going to Iraq. Um, the reason he wanted to go to Iraq is because he wanted to, uh, you know, he's like, I can't sit idly by while people are being oppressed, and I want to contribute in a, a physical, real way to uh, to people um, being freed from a, from an oppressive regime. Um, another theme that will come along is, well, I mean, this is sort of going to be a continuous theme is just him as a patriot versus him as a traitor. Mm -hmm. Um, he has always been critical of, uh, of, uh, the NSA's, uh, scooping of information, um, that they do in the way they manipulate the information they, they take. But when Obama was elected, um, he sort of, he had, he had planned on becoming more vocal about it and becoming sort of, I don't want to say a personality because I don't want to put things in his mouth, but like mm-hmm. of becoming that guy um, uh, earlier. Uh, but when Obama was elected, he was sort of filled with hope and, and thought, right. you know what? Maybe things will change for the better. So he um, knew about the NSA spying. The, this is the U.S. National Security Agency, which is like a domestic um, yes. information gathering agent. Not to the extent that he knew about it when he was put in charge of it. Um, but certainly, um, you know, the dude is the dude is a savvy computer uh, and systems 
guy. You know, he right. he understands the internet certainly as well as any like hacker from Anonymous. Right. And, you know, anything that they would be critical of, he is aware of. So he um, so like while he was in the army, he like learned about this kind of thing was sort of off on it but he but he it wasn't really his pay grade or whatever yet yeah i think his whole life he's always been a computers guy right so he's always been spending right. time in forums and chat rooms and, and understanding how you know oh my system is different what what did this upgrade i i just did to my system do oh it's different than it was before what is it offering right. oh it's offering less security uh for the sake of blank reason you know what i mean or whatever right 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 um so he, uh, yeah, jo- was in the military. Got had to drop out of the military, um, but it was, you know, again another testimony to how smart he was and how good with computers he was. Um, he was uh, fast tracked into a program at the University of Maryland, which is a top secret program um, that you need high level security access just to take or to work oh, wow. for. Okay. Um, and it is run by the NSA, um, this program. After finishing a year of that, he went to, like, what was... Wait, wait. Uh, the NSA runs a secret university program that you can only take if you're enough of a badass? That's right. At the that's University of Maryland. crazy. Yeah, it's just out of... It's like, it, this whole thing is straight out of a spy novel. That makes me like, wonder how many other, like, things like that there are. Like, is the U of A running, like... A secret chef program that you can only get into if you like <laughs> if you like cut the blowfish so you don't get the poison poison part. Yeah, what you don't know is that a hundred percent of the Michelin restaurants in the world are secretly run by Edmonton based secret agent chefs. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. <laughs> that are just like churning out like impossible recipes that are like yeah. defy realism and they're like uh, yeah they, you you don't want to know what i know about yeah. blowfish man yeah <laughs> it's like everything is like the last starfighter like do you remember that movie with the kid who like gets the high score in the video game about that's like a it's like a space combat video game then gets like abducted by aliens to fight in an actual war because he, it's like a it's like a trainer the game Whoa. is like a trainer for the real war well you know that's actually more real than you think it is that's, i know that's what i'm saying yeah yeah that's like real real video game players get hired to fly drones now it also makes me feel like i need to be better at everything i'm doing so that like final if i finally hit a point where i'm like so good at like sitting on my ass and watching Netflix, somebody will be like, "You've been selected for the University of Georgetown's yeah. top secret program." Yeah. <laughs> and like take you away to like some I've, black. I've thought thing. about that. Like, how good at acting do you have to get before like CSIS comes and they're like, "We need you to go undercover." <laughs> this is an interesting story, actually. Um, I was working on a play about spies and um. A, a woman who both of us know, Emma Hillier, who listens to the show. Hi, Emma. Yeah, uh, Emma. Told she us just got s- engaged. Yes, she did. Congratulations, Emma. Congratulations, Emma. Um, and she James. Told, she told a We're story about when she was at Stratford, she was doing something where she was like interviewing people who come to the festival, audience members, um, for like a testimonial thing. And she, she interviewed this woman who said like she had worked for the federal government and was retired. And as part of the thing, Whatever it was. I'm sorry, Emma, I'm butchering your story. But as part of it, they had to kind of just ask them about their lives and and ask them details about their lives. And this woman, who had worked for the federal government, could not reveal any details about anything she had ever done or anywhere she had ever been. And Emma said she actually was like the most unassuming, completely normal beige looking person. Not like skin color beige. I mean, like, just like, like your eye would slide over her in an instant without even thinking about it and like that's the kind of person that ceases actually wants on the ground yeah for sure well look at edward snowden you know look at look at that dude if you like he is a ordinary looking guy and um and honestly to hear him talk about the the technical skills of what he does is like mind-numbingly boring yeah um and yet, you know, he's sitting in motels and, you know, analyzing spy information uh, over and over and over again at, for his job. Um, so he gets put in the secret university. He gets put in the this, in this secret university program. I think he's working. I don't think he's, like, there as a student. But, I see. Uh, but, but it is certainly a learning experience for him. It's, it's a, I think, his first foray into high-level 
um, government security operations. Um, and so he's working for this university program. He does that for a year. And then he goes to a uh, intelligence based job fair, which mm-hmm. I find like really hilarious and quaint and like of course it exists but like that's really funny like Wait, it, so that's like you walk in you have a shirt with your iq printed on the front and yeah. you just like go go to different booths yeah yeah well uh, yeah uh well like intelligence uh i mean uh, you know in the well, other i sense. see i see yeah I see. yeah yeah you mean Not like it's I- like iq it's like hi we're the nsa yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You wanna, exactly. Do you want a lanyard? Would you like a brochure and they hand it and it's just like yeah, yeah. a blank piece of paper? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, if you can figure out how to read this, then you can apply. Yeah, then you're the head of the NSA. Um, so, yeah, so he goes there and he, and he gets a contract with uh, with the NS uh, With the CIA, rather. With, the, with CIA. the CIA. So he's working with the CIA, I think as like a systems administrator or something. It's important, again, to note how smart he is in every one of the uh, his jobs from like here on out he is given uh like supervisor status like he is a he's a very very smart early 20s guy um which actually according to some accounts he most of these places that he works in are mostly people in their 20s um which i guess isn't much of a surprise um because people in their twenties are the yeah, fucking best, baby. I don't think it's anyone's like <laughs> for any like computer based field. I think that like I think most people for me like if I'm like who's the greatest computer programmer in the world, I don't think of like some middle aged guy in the top of an office tower. I think of some like fourteen year old Russian kid with ninety eight Red Bull cans on his yeah. floor. Like, <laughs> and like, you're not wrong. You're yeah, not wrong. Changing eBay's password. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> it's it's much more likely that they're Ukrainian, but, uh, yeah, but right. yeah, yeah. yeah, you're a hundred percent right. Yeah, um, yeah, it is crazy. Ukraine produces a lot of hackers, and I mm. don't really know why. I don't. I think I think it's because it's got huge economic troubles, and that's like a really an uh, awesome way of making money from your bedroom. Did it also have like like the good? or something like did they like get like good internet there like for some reason but then also maybe. they have economic troubles maybe like, i didn't like i didn't why, read into that i don't that's know that's why like pro gaming became so big in, in korea right is because like starcraft and korea were released um at exactly the same time that the whole country got wired for internet because korea came late to the internet so because they came late late to it they got it all at once, and they got it like DSL all at once. So they That's never did right. dial up, right? Like so, then suddenly everyone had the internet, and then everyone there was like a starter computer that came with StarCraft. Yeah, because every- StarCraft was the new game that. Yeah, year. yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so just everybody got onto StarCraft. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's yeah, I'm sure there's some socio, whatever reason that <laughs> yeah. produces like. Thirty yeah. percent of the hackers the world has. That's, yeah, really funny. Ukraine, Ukraine, China, and Russia, and the states. Well, they couldn't um, hack their way out of that occupation of the Crimea, could they? Whoa! Shots fired. Yeah, literally. hard, hard to computer hack a gun. Um, anyway, so he goes, uh, he goes and works for the CIA. This is where, and this is, um, this is another interesting thing. Is that it's uh, he? This is when he starts to really. As I mentioned before, he was already critical of mm. uh, of the way the NSA was working. Uh, of, sorry, the, of the way U.S. intelligence was working. Um, and as soon as he went to work at the CIA, this is when it is um, presumed that he started copying files, um, and, which was interesting. Because when I was first reading, I was like, oh, yeah, he went to the CIA, then the NSA, and then he copied you know, anywhere between 50,000 and 200,000 files. And... Um, and then leak them, but that's actually not true. It, he was he was probably doing it over years, um, over a couple of years. So he went to work for the CIA out in Tokyo, I think. Um, also, fun fun little fact: while while he was working for the CIA, he went to uh, he went to Switzerland. What's the what's that city in Switzerland? Geneva, Zurich. Geneva. Yeah, he went to live in Geneva, and uh, uh, there, he had a point of criticism in that wh- the guy he was working for in Geneva, mm-hmm. um, they they took this uh, Swiss banker out for drinks, 
got him drunk on purpose and then encouraged him to drive home. Um, and then when he was later arrested, they said, tell you what, how about you're an informant for the CIA? Uh, so they, so they, which is like entrapment. Um, Holy shit. Yeah, and so th- that's unconfirmed because, you know, those who listen to our FBI episode will remember like a lot of these yeah. things are, <laughs> are kind of hard to confirm because of the opaqueness of the uh, of the storyline. Yeah. But It's also absolutely the kind of thing. That- yes, yes. It, you know, someone like the, only, the the biggest argument against it is a hot, I forget, is some general or something being like, oh, I don't know. I don't believe that happened just because I can't imagine it happening. It's like, you know, what the fuck like, are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? You can't like they imagine. sent Martin Luther King a letter telling him that he should kill himself because they had fucking videos or tapes of him talking to his mistress and banging her. Like, you yeah. don't think they're going to fucking get some guy busted for drunk driving? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so that's just a fun little anecdote. He went for the, yeah, worked for the CIA. Then, then eventually gets picked up by the NSA. And this is where things really start going. Um, at, as he's working for the NSA, he starts understanding in a more detailed way, what exactly is happening. And he uh, decides to leak the information. He gets a hold of uh, three reporters. Uh, One, uh, let me pull their names up here. Glenn Greenwald, who's sort of the most famous guy Mm -hmm. from The Guardian. He broke the story. Uh, Laura Poitras, who's a documentary maker. um, And she made the, she's responsible for the documentary Citizen Four, which if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's amazing. It's, It's literally... It goes through all the moments of uh, of the leak um, with with Edward Snowden, and then there's a guy called Ewan McCaskill, uh, who is a uh, defense and intelligence correspondent for the Guardian. Which mm-hmm. I don't know, I don't think he contacted him directly. I think he was um, brought in by Glenn Greenwald because Glenn is like he's like ah, I need someone who really understands right. what exactly Edward is saying. Um, anyway, then they leak the information. Um, uh, uh, we'll get to the content of the information in a bit. I just want to sort of get through the narrative. Uh, so then he, he they leak the information piece by piece. Um, eventually, of course, uh, releasing all of it and uh, and and showing Edward Snowden for who he is. There's there's a this huge, you know, Tom Clancy uh, attempt to get. Edward Snowden in this moment because Edward Snowden's in Hong Kong when he's sharing this this info right. um, with the Guardian um, because you know very well calculated it's hard it, Hong Kong has uh, has good extradition laws um, mm-hmm. for this sort of thing so it buys him some time so he knows he's gonna leak he travels to Hong Kong on purpose he calls in he, sick to work right okay. he calls in sick says I'm sick I'm going to work uh, or I'm, I'm I'm taking a couple days off. Uh, goes to Hong Kong and with never with the intent ever to come back. Um, That's so funny that like, I mean, you know, maybe I've just, my brain is addled by conspiracies now, but I'm surprised that, you know, it's like the opposite of being on a terrorist watch list or something, but I'm surprised that like someone with a high security clearance could just go to Hong Kong and it's not like immediately a huge red flag. Yeah. Maybe it is now, but like... You know? Yeah, well, I mean, you have to be watching them, right? And like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, eh. well, as we'll find out later. Yeah, the thing that the government is doing is like scary, right? S- soon, you know right. what I mean? Okay. It's yeah, like yeah, what okay, they're yeah. what they're doing right now is like uh, it's kind of dundering a little bit, but like right. soon it's very scary. Okay, and that so let's kind keep of going. Could happen. Let's keep going. So they're so, in Hong Kong. So he's in Hong Kong, and there's like, you know, it's now everyone's aware. Edward Snowden, where is he? There's been like, you know, obviously uh, the, the his work has like called his house and been like, where are you? You know, mm-hmm. you called in sick a few days ago and you haven't got back to us. They're calling his his girlfriend. His girlfriend has no idea where he is. She's assumed that he's on work somewhere, mm-hmm. which it's worth saying also this whole time. He has shared zero details of anything with her. So this is something that like right. he goes to like the like the lady that Emma talked to at Stratford. Mm-hmm. He goes to work every day, comes home. She says, how is your day? And he says, I can't talk about it. And that's what his whole life has been up until this moment. Right. Um, unable to share any of the information he knows. 
So he goes to Hong Kong. Uh, everyone's looking for him. Uh, U.S. agents, his bank accounts shut down. You know, everything is on lockdown. He gets a, um, a local lawyer um, to help him. They, they, they're they trying to get him out of there. They want to get him to an asylum. Um, they call in Julian Assange. Julian Assange goes to work with WikiLeaks. They're like... They were responsible for getting him out of Hong Kong. They get him to Russia. I think with the intent to get him to Argentina, because Argentina is, pro- I think, the like least cooperative, um, while also being like the most livable mm-hmm. um, uh, place uh, for extradition. And so he, because isn't that isn't that where Julian Assange went? I think so. Uh, yeah, he was in Sweden for a while too, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in, like the Swedish embassy somewhere in. Um, Oh, I can't remember where now. Sorry. Oh, yeah. He was in an Argentinian embassy in, in Sweden. Sweden. Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so they wanted to get him to Argentina. And so he... Uh, anyway, but he goes to Russia. His plane is grounded in Russia. And he's, like, sitting on the plane like, oh, fuck. They got me, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, old Vladimir Putin uh, is <laughs> like, oh, U.S., you want this man? Tell you what. I'll hold on to him for a bit. And yeah. they give him a year stay and they keep extending it. And now his stay is extended until 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, at which time we don't know what's going to happen to him. Um, but he has at least until 2020. Um, nowadays, he is uh, making his money by giving talks um, at universities and stuff via Skype. Mm-hmm. Um, and and according to him, he lives a fairly normal life. Like, walk, you know. He's he's not a doesn't have bodyguards doesn't you know he just walks around Russia like a citizen and makes his money and lives his life. I mean he's like I'm very sure I'm being watched, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, you know that's my life now. Um, his his intent is to come back to the United States. He does want to, um, but only on the terms that he receives a fair public trial. Right. Um, okay. He doesn't want to go to one of those secret, um, secret trials where you are tried and uh, and judged uh, secretly, and no one yep. ever hears about yep. what what went down. Um, um, so, what did he leak? Well, he leaked about fifty thousand to two hundred thousand uh, top secret files that outline the NSA and other government agencies. Um, widespread gathering of information um, on everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody that touches a computer, touches a cell phone, everybody, in no matter what country you live in. Um, the, the, this, this group of governments is known as the Five Eyes Internet Alliance, which I thought was like a... Why do these people not <laughs> name... Like, what are they thinking when they yeah. name shit like this? Yeah, exactly. Like, that like, is exactly what Dr. Evil would have named yeah, his... Yeah, that's right. ...his I- intelligence alliance. We are Dr. Um, Claw and the Ten Demons of the Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance is uh, U.S., uh, Australia, UK, New Zealand, and Canada. Yay! Yay! Um, and all the, all five of those countries are contributing um, to this network of information gathering. The troubling thing is that a lot of these things are illegal in these countries, uh, but they're not illegal in all of these countries. So, so you have this fun mix and match game of like, oh yeah, hey UK. Um, we'd like to gather this kind of information um, on everybody who has a Nokia phone, uh, but our country won't allow us to. But your government laws are a little bit different than ours, and I offer a little bit of wiggle room. Could you guys do it? And they go, yep, okay. And then they do it and send it over, and nobody's broken the law because laws are different. <laughs> um, now, here's the troubling bit, is that they are widely grabbing information, often with no basis um, for investigation, um, the, which is an ineffective way to gather this kind of information. So, like, yes, your dick pics are, are stored somewhere on some government computer. Um, but, you know, nobody, as of right now, that's not probably really a threat to you. Like, the odds of the government wanting to use your dick pics against you is, like, pretty low. The mm-hmm. troubling thing is that um, they are a bit working on algorithms 
uh, or not the troubling thing. They're working on algorithms to sift through this information quicker um, uh, because it's ineffective. If you, if you grab so much information, it means nothing. If you grab a specific piece of information, it means everything. Um, but they have no way of diffusing it to, to a specific piece of information. I imagine they're using... Now, I'm just like some asshole parroting the tech news that I read, but they're probably using like neural networks, probably machine learning and neural networks to hone in. Exactly. Exactly yeah. right. Now, yeah, so they're, yeah, they're spying on everyone. On Should we, pa- should everyone. we pause and explain neural networks if people don't know, understand what they are? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Go essentially, for it. like it's just a kind of self, uh, self-teaching self computer program i also don't really know this shit like Corey matthewson is going to listen to this and be like i have to come on to just write all the wrongs that are done in this section of the podcast um yeah. which we would be more than welcome to do Corey. you should come on and talk to us yeah hop on it baby ai um but uh yeah so it's basically like a pro- computer program that can like uh it essentially get better at doing what it's supposed to be doing by trying it over and over and over again and evaluating its own progress. Um, and and it's kind of like the hottest new thing in in coding. Yeah, it's like it, a computer that codes itself. Um, yeah, it's like this. It's the it's a stepping stone to AI. You know, it's yeah. like it's a necessary discovery. Yeah. To, to and there have been some AI. pretty flashy like headlines with neural networks. Like one of the ones was about um, a Google translation program that managed to teach itself translations between languages it hadn't been fed the direct translations for. Like back in the day to make Google Translate, it was like you had to manually be like in Japanese dog is this word and in English it's this word and in Ukrainian it's this word. Um and this 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 thing taught itself to do like it had learned English to Japanese and English to Ukrainian and then figured out Ukrainian to Japanese because it had the connections in right. place, right? Yeah. Like stuff like that. I've um, also heard of uh, 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 neural network batteries, which oh. find or no, not batteries. Neural network, um, sorry, uh, um, computer chips that mm-hmm. find storage within themselves. Yeah, I heard so, about that too. So you're like, yeah, you you throw the computer, you plug the computer chip in, and it's got a hundred gigabytes of memory, and then two days later, it's got 125 gigabytes of memory because it's like, oh, we'll just we'll just scoot this out of the way and put this yeah. here and compress this and, do, and compress yeah. this and yeah. I heard that yeah because the computer is able to uh, constantly search for the most efficient solutions. It does stuff like it takes advantage of like minute microscopic flaws in the way the chip is pr- physically produced that like create slightly more efficient pathways and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. Um, and of course, the most terrifying neural network story I think is AlphaGo, which is the uh, the machine program that plays the like uh, Asian board game Go, which is like entire orders of magnitude more complicated than chess. And oh, they yeah. Thought they would. They thought they were still at least ten years away from creating a computer computer program that could beat a human grandmaster at Go, and they created one. Then they just basically created a neural network that played Go against itself that tens and tens and thousands of times, um, and then had it play people. And Go is still an evolving game. Like you can look, you know, ne- the Go being played now is more advanced than the Go being played. 50 years ago 100 years ago 200 years ago etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm. and they said that watching the neural network play go was like watching someone playing go from 70 years in the future like it was doing moves that seemed to make be utter gibberish at the beginning of the game that resolved into these like devastatingly effective strategies that no one had ever conceived of or seen before which is the most terrifying thing that i think i've ever heard with regards to ai yeah um, yeah. I mean, for some comfort, um, there is still no AI that can beat a human and AI. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you put a monkey in the machine, it's still better than just the machine. Um, it's like, uh, I think Gary Kasparov, the chess player, was doing work with that, of being like, because he... Uh, he lost famously to Deep Blue. Deep Blue he's yeah. he's thought by many to be the greatest chess player ever to live, and he was beat by Deep Blue, a computer program that uh, that was uh, trained to play chess. Uh, however, when teamed up with Deep Blue, he is able to beat Deep Blue. Right. So, um, so that that should offer some comfort, but it's not. You know, 
it's yeah. imminent. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's imminent that that eventually a computer will be able to learn how yeah. to play chess and and go. So um, and the NSA is using that them. technology to kind of try to hone their their information gathering thing. So they're gathering all the information, but it's like impossible to sort. Essentially, like, it's a really impossible difficult. to sort. And but the and and here, but here's where the danger comes. And so, like because it's impossible to sort, it's also impossible to find patterns in. Right. Um, so like. Okay, what's the best way to explain this? Um, so every person, every person who's listening to this has like a bank card, and um, every time, uh, yeah, the the key phrase is is linkability here. Is so like if I can connect my bank card to my phone bill, that's that's a that's a single link, right? And mm-hmm. it can be measured, and it's not. You know, people always think about like my cybersecurity as like I don't want people to break into my bank account. You know, like that would suck. All my money would be stolen. Mm. The government has no interest in stealing your money. The go- the government, all the government wants to know is like when you spend your money. Mm-hmm. So like um, every time, every time you you buy a, buy something on your bank uh, bank card, or you spend money at a uh, at a subway stop, or uh, or whatever, you're leaving a fingerprint behind, just a little record that you were there, mm-hmm. and that's the value. You know, information is the new oil boom of our of our lifetime. Right. They want all of our fingerprints. So, like, as you do that, you can actually start to map out somebody's day. Right. Like, Jamie woke up. He logged into his on his computer at this location. Mm-hmm. Um, he made a he purchased breakfast or whatever. Um, then it, it says uh, at this restaurant, he picked up his breakfast at mm-hmm. this time. So in that time, he walked there. Then later, he he bought some tokens at the subway station. And then on uh, 15 minutes later, he was on the other side of town and he uh, stopped in for a coffee. And, you know, they can eventually map out your whole day. Right. right. And now, now something happens, right? Someone gets shot on the corner of Broadview and Bloor. In, right. in Toronto, and oh, and Jamie was there right. um, on that day. Now, just because you were there doesn't mean that you saw anything. Doesn't mean that you shot anybody. Doesn't mm-hmm. mean that you were implemented. But it can be assumed that you have information, right. right? And this is where some of the danger happens, right? Is like we uh, we can what we're seeing is a clear pattern of information that could lead you to believe something but is not proof of, of, right. of that happening. On top of that, um, you know, that's, that, that, that'd be a rare case scenario in which someone was, uh, was targeted that way. Um, but on top of that, what the, what's really valuable is where you're getting your information from. So right. like, if they know, <clears throat> if they're keeping track of, you know, everywhere I'm going, uh, you know, they can, they can see what I'm reading. They can see who I'm talking to. Right. They can go, you know, like if I'm walking down the street, they, they know, oh, Jamie was on this corner at this time and his mutual friend on Facebook was also on the corner at this time and they and there's a five minute gap in both of their schedules as far as we can tell. We can tell that they were talking. Um, oh, it's just so fucked up. It's like, right. yeah, they like can, I, they, effectively I, example, they can map your whole life. For example, like I volunteer with activist groups right yes so like they could track they could figure out where our meetings are probably if they knew where three of these people like a three of us if they had three of us tr- uh, plotted out enough that they could track our days yeah and we don't see each other except at these activist meetings they could easily figure out where we, all of our meetings are they absolutely could and not only not like that it doesn't stop there my man they already know that you're in these activist groups they already yeah. know that you visit these places at this time this is when the meetings are that and if they really wanted to all they have to do is flip on your phone and record it yeah, which if they can absolutely do. They a hundred percent. Edward Snowden has gone on account of saying we at the NSA. Like part of the problem is that this is a, you know, it's not that this is a necessarily evil technology that they're creating. Um, part of the problem is that it is a extraordinarily powerful technology that they're creating with no checks and balances, and right. nobody has been informed, and nobody has debated the topic at all. About mm-hmm. about like what secure measures to take, um, 
And so he was saying, you know, on my computer, on my desktop at work, with just putting in my user password, I was able to watch uh, live drone videos from thousands of drones, American drones, or thousands of drones from multiple countries around the world. I can flip on people's computer screens. I can flip. I can flip on the recording device in people's phones. I can. Uh, I can track anybody I want. I can see who's friends with who. Um, who's cheating on who? I am unchecked in my ability to do that right. um, as a as a senior officer at the NSA, and that's the problem. Um, right. Is that this technology, with a couple very small um, policy changes, could become a very big problem for a lot of people? I.e., right. like you know, say old Donny Trump. Um, what feels like, ooh, Hillary Clinton is, is going to run against me again in 2020. I think that we'd like to see everything that's on her personal server. You know, This was Watergate. All- Remember that this was Watergate. That was what they were trying to do. They were trying to bug the phones and steal documents. But they don't even have to leave the office to do you it You don't anymore. need to leave the office. There's already somebody doing it. Angela Merkel's personal phone was being monitored by the NSA. Mm-hmm. Angela Merkel. Like her phone, her phone. Every time Angela Merkel lifts uh, lifts her phone to talk on it, there's some dude or lady, but probably mm-hmm. a dude because it's computer sciences. Some dude <laughs> sitting in on, in on an island in Hawaii listening to it. Okay, you know? wow. So okay, let's let's ask the question though that everyone really wants to know. Yes. What are the odds that Facebook controls your microphone, and when you talk about people you haven't seen in a long time, it shows you them on your timeline. <laughs> uh, Simon zero. Bloom, are you listening to this right now? <laughs> We're on uh, to you, you fucker. Yeah, uh, zero, I'd say. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Probably. You don't know this, but like you just saying his name out loud onto this uh, podcast has like no. put him on like ninety lists. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What it? it well, like uh, you know, while while Edward Snowden was being chased down, there were a hundred one point two million Americans put on watch lists um, because you know they just raised the the alert or whatever to you know turquoise or whatever it goes to, and they go, okay, everybody that's written about like. Uh, written the words Snowden and hero in the same sentence is on a watch list. And so like on Facebook, if you guaranteed a hundred percent, you, you know, for you, especially who is an active political chatter have been put on some sort of list at some point or another where people are, they're probably not paying any attention to you specifically, but, but you are part right. of a group of people that are being monitored. Um, yeah, and so so yeah, effectively we've we've developed this horrifying technology um, that is very very powerful, and the people who control it have no no one looking over their shoulder. No, there's no laws that really pertain to it because it's so new. Um, I yeah. think how are they doing it? I think it's in conjunction with like internet providers. So I think like Dell. Um, Amazon, which is like the biggest server farm in the world, and Google are all complicit. Um, so they're they're giving their information to the government. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, like, wh- like what the hell do we do? <laughs> like, I, 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 the the dark part of my nature um, thinks that probably what needs to happen is somebody's gonna there's gonna have to be like some horrible tragedy before public opinion could possibly muster enough to politically act and put checks and balances on, like there were with the old FBI, right? Like, people's lives will have to be destroyed. People have to die in order for anyone to understand how horrible this is, really. Because you can hear, it is, it's fucking up, it's deeply ghoulish and and appalling and horrible, but I feel like it's also kind of an abstract and intellectual uh, mm-hmm. thing to, to get your head around. Like, it's hard until you look over the dude's shoulder and see all of your sexts on a monitor in Hawaii, you probably, it's like hard to viscerally process how invasive yeah, this well, is, Yeah, well, that's right? what sort of what makes this thing um, so scary is that it doesn't affect you until it does, you know? And like... Um, and also, even when it does affect you, the odds of it being like, oh, man, the CIA busted in my door and started asking me about terrorist stuff is, like, pretty low. Like, that's, I'm sure yeah. that that is 
I don't, I don't want to say that. I, it, that could happen. It could happen, and it potentially yeah. will. Odds are, at some point, the CIA is going to get or NSA is going to get something wrong, and they're going to accuse someone who who didn't deserve it. And it, all the, all the check po- points were there, but uh, but there was no yeah. no guilt. <clears throat> but um, how like the scarier thing is how they can map out where you're getting your information. Um, you know, it, they can they can influence your information. You, uh, uh, you know, by potentially sending you different news stories than you would like to get. You know, which is, which already, is already happening. happening. To some extent, um, yeah, yeah. They, uh, or getting rid of political opponents, or like, like secretly. You know, by being like, yeah. and say, I saw you downloaded Grinder. Uh, uh, you know, mm. uh, whoever. Yeah. Uh, do Do you want your constituents to know that you that you're a closeted gay man no okay well then i guess you better drop out of the race you know and it's not through you know the idea of it happening to hillary clinton or like who someone running for president is like i think that'd be a pretty bold move myself if i was looking to take over the united states government if i was the president i would be doing it in micro doses through like Oh, this. Well, the Dem- but the Democratic National Convention was hacked, and their emails were leaked. Oh yeah, baby. like, oh yeah, baby. like I mean, it's we're not we're, we're in that reality that we're not like a step away from that reality. It's yeah. coming. I mean, I think maybe our only saving grace might be that Donald Trump is too dumb to know what to ask for. Like he might he just doesn't understand what he's able to. Yeah. do. Yeah. Well, and there's also like yeah, I think you're right. And there's also there's the step <laughs> that this <clears throat> understanding this technology kind of requires the step beyond my own dick pics, right? Like, right. I don't know that Donald Trump is smart enough to understand, like, you know, the internet came out in the last quarter of his life. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know that, I don't know yeah, that yeah, he yeah. understands that, like, um, oh, they can like they the, can check my tweets or they can check my texts or whatever. It's like, yeah, yeah, sure. But, like... But it's like the soft information is so much more interesting. Way more information and way like, more yeah, way, yeah. way more interesting and way more dangerous. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, right. it's what they can do with massive amounts of information um, that is scary. The, like, I don't know. I think, you know, there's lots of, lots of great um, activists who... Uh, who start like there are computer programs and stuff to hide your IP address and hide what you're looking at and things like that. I do quite a bit of that. I work on Tor pretty regularly, um, especially yeah. if I'm looking at anything that's, you know, not not incriminating because that's that's the wrong way to look at it. But something that's like uh, I use Tor sometimes now to research anything political at all. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. It's like yeah, and there. Are, like when I read when I read the ISIS magazine for this podcast, I used it. Mm, for sure. When we, when we were doing ISIS, I googled. I was about to Google how to join ISIS, and I was like, wait, 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 wait. I just want to know, you know, like as a as an in- information yeah, thing. Yeah. But I don't want, you know. And that's <clears throat> that's the freedom of information that Edward Snowden. Bring it back to him. Is like fighting for is that to be curious. You can you should not be criminal for being curious so like if you want to right if you want to search something like that and and introduce yourself to the idea of like how does a person go through that you know you can't just black that part of your brain out that's that's immoral um but that's that's the the neighborhood that the the government is creating um Mm -hmm. well and we're all creating Frankly, it's not it's not just the government. The government is just abusing it. We're 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 all creating this is, it. Well, and this is like a perfect uh, a perfect example of the kind of thing we're like passively allowing things to continue the way that they've been going is like dangerous. It's like really dangerous. We need to be, become like actively attentive to how this these laws are created, how this technology is being harnessed and used, because those people are not going to constrain themselves. Yeah. It's very unlikely. Exactly. Right? That's a hundred. A hundred percent true. Um, we live in a. We are the first um, generation in which our pasts, our personal pasts, cannot be erased, and also mm. um, can be used against us for our whole lives. And um, in in Citizen Four, there's this fellow who's ta- giving a talk, <clears throat> and he's uh, he's saying he asks the audience, he's like, "Who here has been arrested?" 
and when arrested, who has like had a fingerprint scan or like had their picture taken or something like that? And they all, you know, a few people raised their hand or whatever. And he said, like, you know, you guys are his words. You are the canaries in the coal mine. You're the people who are n- labeled by the government as having this moment, despite how true it is, how, uh, you know, what the actual story is. It doesn't matter. You've got this this dot on your record and it will never go away ever. And it is free to be judged um, by everyone who whoever looks you up or hacks into your account or anything you are now uh, you have a very easy pressure point which is what hacking is all about right it's like it's not it's about pressure points it's not yeah yeah um, yeah which is what how most most hacking works is like I find this information right, yeah, on yeah. you and, and now I can get you to give me your username and password to your corporation Um you right. know, there's not, yeah, yeah. Like there are, there are programs that can break pa- like password breakers and stuff like that, but right, right, yeah, right. it's a lot easier to manipulate a human than it is to manipulate a computer. Crazy. Um, I, I have hope that someday Edward Snowden will be able to return to the States. Although like the, the closest, I think parallel we have is Chelsea mm-hmm. Manning, right? Who, who was a soldier in the American army who leaked, Um, among other things that like really infamous gun camera footage of an American Black Hawk helicopter just machine gunning a car full of Iraqi journalists civilians and with like with the microphone uh, feed of the soldiers like laughing about how many kills they were getting um, and stuff like that and and Chelsea Manning spent 10 years in jail uh, in America, but she was pardoned by Obama as one of the very last things Obama did and now she's free and actually if you're on Twitter Chelsea Manning's Twitter is an island of positivity and idealism and beauty in a like vicious sea of cynicism and dank Pepe right. memes. So I very much recommend giving Chelsea Manning a follow on Twitter. She's like a very smart and uh, also very much a crusader of the freedom of information and the freedom of um, you know people and oversight of the government technology. And she's just like lovely. Yeah, <laughs> it's like really nice. It just like it peps my day up every time she talks. Um, so yeah, uh, I think. I think, so, what, but like, unless somebody pardons him, he's he's always gonna be. He's like, always gonna be on the run. At least, yeah, until twenty twenty, that'll be an interesting thing. There was also like a lot of one of my first concerns when Trump was elected. Uh, one of the first people I thought about was Edward Snowden because I was like, oh shit, because if Trump is on good terms ish with with Putin, this could be bad news. Because the only reason yeah. Russia has him is because Barack Obama wanted him. Um, right, right. Yeah, yeah. This also this um, this moment. Uh, first of all, I think Edward Snowden is going to be one of the most historically relevant people in of our generation. Like we, he, he's going to be taught about in in universe in schools yeah, he's in the almost, future. He's almost like fucking Galileo. Kind of. Something. Yeah. He's like. Yeah. He's like. Um, He's like Martin Luther, the first yeah. one. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, and... That's what he kind of reminds me of. And this whole thing is going to be... is For me, is the biggest stain on a Barack Obama um, that I know. Um, is like, not all yeah. the programs that George W. Bush put into place. Barack Obama said he was going to create uh, higher checks and balances for those intelligence programs and actually did the opposite. Removed... Yeah, I mean, them. he was, and it's, he was not. Yeah, go ahead. He was in, in that way. He was not a progressive president. You know, he deported more people than any other president. He he stepped up all of these security programs. He exploded more people with drones than any other president. You know, like he 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 was not a peaceful president. He was not a benign president. He was a pretty right wing president who happened to be black. Yeah, baby. Like. Like it's hard to look at it any other way. Certainly with security. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And it's I don't know, man. It's it, yeah, it's a scary and interesting world we live in. And like, the, uh, you know, I always when I, when I hear people talking about the singularity, um, mm-hmm. which for those of you that don't know is like uh, the moment that AI becomes as intelligent uh, and surpasses uh, human intelligence. Uh, I think of that fear often as a bit of an irrational one um not that not that ai is going to surpass humans but that it's all going to happen at once you know like that's mm. that's the part that i'm like ah but you're not really thinking about this clearly you know like it's not like you yeah. can't it would be impossible to create a, ro- a computer that smart 
without doing right. other miraculous things before then. And right. each of those miraculous things could destroy us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is the same yeah. thing of like, you know, is, is it going to all of a sudden become like children of men, like government shut down of, uh, of, of cities and stuff like that? Probably not. What's going to happen is a slow implementation of uh, of control. Um, yeah, which, yeah, yeah. I want to, and I also want to add. This is another one of the functions of the of this five Five Eyes intelligence agency. Is the U.S. was hacking into other countries, um, dozens and dozens and dozens of other countries. Um, mm-hmm. This is what these documents revealed. Not just like. You know, like they hacked into the government, not just Angela Merkel's phone. They're got, they're hacking into the government of like Latvia. And you're like, what the mm-hmm. fuck do you want with any of the files that fucking Latvia's got? Or like Austria <laughs> or Bulgaria, you know, not, maybe not Bulgaria. Bulgaria's got bad arms dealers. But like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you don't, you don't need this. Anyway, they're hacking into these in these programs and effectively creating shutdown methods for governments. So, uh, right. so like at it, you know, they, Japan was super pissed because they found out that um, the U.S. had you know effectively created fail safes for all of Japan. So like if Japan acts up, all all the U.S. has to do is push the off button and go like boom, Japan sh- shut down, and now we don't have a problem. You know, and now we now we can move mili- our military or whatever, um, mm-hmm. and that's happening all over the world with dozens and dozens and dozens of countries. And you are fucked if you think it's not happening in Canada. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It I don't. It it is it is one of those things where the world and technology is moving, and more than ever in my life, I am aware that you're right. Passivity is not an option. Is that Things are going to happen whether you're ready for them to happen or not. And so it is. Mm. I think it's important for everybody to be becoming more computer literate, especially, you know, if you're, if you're posting on social media like where you are all the time and what you're doing and like, you know, just haphazardly just doing all that shit, you need to take a computer's course just for your own safety. Mm. You know, it's like a driver's exam. Just understand... Mm. You know, I'm not saying don't do it, but just understand what you're putting on the internet. Understand who's reading it, how they can influence you, how they can influence your friends via what they tell you. Um, and yeah, yeah, because it, it, you know, it's uh, or via what you tell them. And uh, yeah, it's it's a scary, it's a scary thing no. and an interesting thing. And we are ten years from now, we're going to be living in a very different world for better or for worse, because of this technology. And, we, you know, it's it's just imperative that it gets debated, um, first and foremost, that these polit- politics of it catch up with the technology. Well, okay, and there's something really important. This conversation is so toxic and poisonous about Snowden, about Chelsea Manning, about all of these, like, leakers. Um, and it's because... I think that people get mad that their country did something bad and they literally shoot the messenger. You know what I mean? Like they don't want to think of their country as being bad and doing bad things. And so they they get pissed off at the person who who told them as opposed to being pissed off at their country for doing the bad Mm. thing. And right now the political conversations about this kind of thing are really derailed by getting mad at Snowden and claiming Snowden is working for Russia and trying to fuck us all over and not really engaging with the notion that we need to take responsibility for this technology as a as a populace yeah. as a citizenry we need to start pushing for checks and balances on this kind yeah. of thing and certainly a merit um, to Snowden yeah. is like what he released um publicly mm-hmm. um so like he Snow, you know, he was saying uh, uh, he had access to everything. And so for that short period where the government was looking for him, when they knew he was leaking, when they knew, well, when they knew he was missing, um, when they knew there were leaks happening, uh, he was like, they're probably having a fucking heart attack because I had access to all of it. I was a senior systems Mm -hmm. administrator at the most top secret um, inv- oh, th- sorry, the second most uh, invasive 
uh, government intelligence agency in the world, being the NSA, the first being GCHQ in uh, in England. Um, hmm. But he had because their laws are more yeah chill, exactly, so they can really get. But in he there. had he had access to everything, but he was very selective with what he released. Yes, fifty thousand to two hundred thousand files, but. He was, uh, you know, he told Glenn Greenwald and Ewan uh, uh, McKen- uh, whatever his last name is, Scottish guy, that he McGregor, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ewan McGregor, famed Scottish journalist, Ewan McGregor, also <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi when he was younger. Um, yeah, he told them he's like, I this I have, ac- you know, these some of these files I'm protecting um, myself, and I have I have uh, confidence in myself to protect them from 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 hackers and stuff, um, but I don't want them released because of classified information that it could be a danger to us and to our country and to people in the field and and so on and so forth. He's not, you know, and now, I don't know, we can talk a bit about the personality of Edward Snowden, but he's not a, uh, he's a patriot, you know. He's not anti-classified mm-hmm. information. He's not anti um, spying or anti espionage or intelligence. Uh, he's and he's he's not even he's not even like anti assault weapons in uh, in his own country. Mm. You know he th- he's he is a an American. You know he loves America and the freedom that America has and and he thinks the idea of America is worth fighting for. It's just that this is a, a huge step over the line. And um, and yeah, he, he thought the whistle needed to be blown, and so he he put it all out in the open. Very was very open about you know he said to the reporters, I don't want I don't want there to be any search for who's leaking this stuff. I want it to be me I'll, out of the gate. I will come forward, say mm-hmm. fuck you. I'm saying this, and uh, and I want to be I want to be heard in trial. Um, so he's like, you know, it, you know those that say he's a Russian spy and. And stuff like that. I kind of go, but it, it, you know, it's 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 really it's it's irrelevant actually. It's really irrelevant. Like, if the information is true, it's irrelevant. Yes, yes, you're like you're right. You're right. the The question is then, like, what has he told Putin? Um, which I think nothing, based on all, all the interviews I've seen with him, based on everything I know about him. His family is like federal government to the fucking bone. So that's like pretty. Mm-hmm. That's pretty. If I was Vladimir Putin. Like he would be certainly the crown jewel of people to turn like <laughs> for mm-hmm. for the Russian cause because of how isolated and difficult it would be to to do. You know, he'd, it just mm-hmm. doesn't add up. Um, I mean, you could make the argument that Putin is offering him asylum based on his cooperation with information, but um, but you know, Snowden Snowden has made it very very apparent he's happy to go back to the U.S. so long as he gets a fair trial. But the U.S. is not cooperating mm-hmm. in that way, and they say they can't guarantee that. And um, and so so there he sits, which but, is which is totally how the Bill of Rights works, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like oh, sorry, we you know maybe you'll get a fair trial, but we have to spin the justice wheel, and if it comes up on bankrupt, you know, I can't promise you anything. Yeah, well, that's well, it's just the you know the U.S. government has all kinds of laws that they developed in the eighties with the uh, w- uh, th- thanks to the sweet sweet Russians um, and U.S. and the Cold War. Mm. Esp- it's under the Espionage Act, and as soon as you're like. As soon as they put the stamp of Espionage Act on your uh, on your file, it's like goodbye fucking rights. You know, you're going you're going to Guantanamo Bay and you're gonna disappear. You know, you will will yeah yeah yeah, yeah no fair trial there. Ugh, oh boy. Oh boy is right, man. Okay, I think I think maybe we need to we need to bring it down there. Um, yeah, yeah. Is there is there any? last point that you are dying to make that you didn't get a chance to make i mean i feel like i know a lot more about it now. yeah i just think um i don't know protect your protect your information it's not all about gathering dick pics it's about gathering information on mass um one of the big things mm-hmm. that i sort of um i sort of understood more clearly and it's kind of a depressing thought um is that humans are very predictable and that we are uh when, 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 you know, dealing with a person in an individual um, uh, basis, they can be very interesting and, and colored and, and unique and, and, and beautiful. But when dealing with humans at, at, over the course of like millions or thousands, we become very benign, very predictable. 
we're like we're like bacteria you know we you can you can say oh this group of people is going to do this because this is how they act and who they talk to and and how mm-hmm. they interact and this group of people is go- it's what marketing is you know it's just and social uh, sociology it's just looking at groups of people that way and it makes you feel very small very ununique and very um binary but uh it um I don't know. You need to start thinking of yourself in that way. And and what do I put out in the world? And protect your information and, and understand that uh, people people will abuse it. Yep. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, you heard it here first. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm breaking the <laughs> okay. story on Edward Snowden. It is. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thanks very much for listening. If you have questions, comments, follow-up information, suggestions for topics, any feedback at all, Find us on Twitter at Explain Jamie or Google Explain to Jamie. We're very findable on the internet. It's easy to get in touch with us, and we do read what gets sent to us, and we do take feedback. So please hit us up. Yeah. Um, also, we'd like to send a special thank you to the unpaid intern who has to listen to this at the CIA headquarters. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you're doing great work. Yeah. All of a sudden, all those listens we get from Boynton, Virginia, are making a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, I did say uh, out of context, I want how to join ISIS. So I think we're being listened to by more than one person now, probably in Hawaii as well. Great. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Hi. Um, you should definitely check out our other episodes. <laughs> you'll, you'll really dig them. Um, yeah. Um, come, see, come see our plays. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this has been, I don't know, this has been really fun explaining stuff. It's like, it, it, I can't believe yeah. that you go through the stress of researching this shit every week. Mind you, I think you have an easier time doing it just because of the context of... Uh, I also of like it. Yeah. I like doing it. You I know, like, I was fun for immediately <laughs> delivered back to grade nine when I was like, ugh, I gotta yeah. fucking do a report on, like, Trotsky. Like, kill yeah. me now. Yeah. yeah, whereas I'm like, did you know that Trotsky's pet donkey was named also Trotsky? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. Not you, me. No, not no. a fact. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well... Thanks so much for listening. This has been Explain It to Richard. Or this has been Explain It! Exclamation part to, to Cole, call my Jamie. Yeah, I'm Jamie. <laughs> I'm we'll Richard. We'll catch you next time. Thanks so much, everybody. Woo! Woo!